The CVR has a very proud history and an important heritage to celebrate. Our new building is named in memory of Sir Michael Stoker, the first chair of virology at the University of Glasgow and the first chair of virology in the whole United Kingdom. Sir Michael passed away in August 2013 at the age of 95, having enjoyed a highly productive and influential career. This name therefore not only captured the distinguished history of virology research at the university, but it also a tribute to the lasting legacy of Sir Michael created here in Glasgow. Interestingly, the legacy of virology research in Glasgow may also owe a debt of gratitude to Sir James Watson. This is a very poignant moment in our history, dating back to 10th of March 1957, when Stoker, based at Clare College, Cambridge at the time, penned an aerogram to his friend and colleague James Watson. In this letter, Sir Michael solicits Watson's opinion on the scientific merit of accepting a chair at either University of Glasgow or Edinburgh University, with a view to establishing an MRC unit for fundamental virology research. Dear Jim, how are you and how's your new job? Not too overburdened with teaching and administration, I hope. Could you, in confidence, give me an opinion? I've recently been approached about two jobs, both chairs, one in Glasgow and one in Edinburgh. A substantial part of each job would involve the direction of the MRC unit for fundamental virology. At first, I must admit I thought Glasgow had the honours, with Davison and Pontecorvo, but since visiting Edinburgh and spending some time with Swans Group, I'm not so sure. They impressed me a lot. There are, of course, a lot of other factors. For example, there will be less teaching and administration at Glasgow. On the other hand, it's nicer to live in Edinburgh. Strictly on the science issue, what do you think of one Glasgow to Edinburgh as a background for fundamental virology? Sadly, we don't know what Watson wrote in response, or perhaps Stoker was won over by the promise of less administration and teaching responsibility in Glasgow. But thankfully for us, he opted for a position at the University of Glasgow, where he became the first chair of virology in the UK. In 1961, with the support of the university and the Medical Research Council, the Institute of Virology opened in Church Street, and Stoker spent what he considered to be the most productive period of his research career here before moving to London in 1968 to be director of research at the Imperial Cancer Research Fund Laboratories in London. Following Sir Michael's departure, directorship of the Institute of Virology passed into the very capable hands of Professor Subert Sharp and subsequently Professor Duncan McGill but to whom oversaw key discoveries and milestones in the field of viral research. Our site at Church Street played a very important part of our history. Some of our staff members have spent their entire careers working in this building. They all have their own unique memories of their time spent working with us. The physical environment was, was superb. It was a brand new building, bright and shiny and uh, lots of space uh, in it at that time. In fact, I had a lab to myself as a young PhD student, uh, and I was quite aggrieved, actually, when uh, at the end of my first year I had to share a lab with someone else and only had a bay to myself. I probably spent like probably just over half of my, my working life in this place, and yeah, it feels like home. It's hard to imagine now that, for example, nobody had a PC on their desk. Everything was done by writing and bits of paper. Papers were typed in the office. Uh, it just took so much longer to do everything. I was actually the first person in virology that had an email address. And we were one of the first labs, if not the first lab, that had a PC in the lab. I was one of the first PhD students there. Uh, my supervisor was Michael Stoker. Uh, well, for the first year, because the person who was uh, supposed to be my supervisor, Ian McPherson, had gone off to Philadelphia to work at the Worcester Institute for a year. When I told people in Paris that I was thinking about coming to Glasgow and I'd applied for a position here, it was sort of like a general feeling of disbelief and like holding their hands and, oh, Glasgow, the building, the building. Um, say that with a French accent and very dramatic. And uh, um, <laughs> the, which I thought was quite kind of extraordinary because I did my PhD in a building which, which was at best a garden shed with double glazing and uh, so I thought the Glasgow Virology really was something really extraordinary and when I turned up here it, I wasn't disappointed and uh, 
So thankfully, I was, uh, I've always been a huge fan of Urban Decay and so on. I kind of think the old building, there was something about it that sort of felt like a sort of cosy old sweater though, or something like that. You know, it had all the mosaic tiles that, that fell off. And I kind of think with this place here, I've been saying since I came back, you know, they should have preserved one panel of it or something like that and substituted the gold for a bit of scabby old mosaic or something like that. You know, it's, it's, it's part of the place's history. My first recollection of, uh, of Church Street was uh, first of all entering into a building that uh, was uh, definitely beyond its uh, uh, sell-by date. And, um, and then uh, when I went into my office, it was like going back into the 60s and the 70s. But the labs were full of uh, state-of-the-art equipment with uh, driven scientists and an excellent uh, environment. So there was this contrast and this uh, is uh, excellent. Now we can continue in, uh, in a state-of-the-art building and state-of-the-art offices uh, with the same uh, driven people. Michael Stoker, who, who was, he was a lovely man. He was, uh, he was very charming in, a, in an oldie worldy sort of way and very uh, very generous uh, and uh, supportive. John led the unit with an almost paternal instinct. He had a finger in every pie, not just administratively but scientifically, and he was famous for making sure he went to every seminar and he would always ask questions in every seminar. And he was also famous for things like at the end of a seminar he would say, I have two questions. The first question has three parts. <laughs> and if you missed a seminar, he would then later ask the seminar giver to, get, to, to present it again in his office when it was convenient. So he, he knew everything that was going on. The unit was almost closed for strategic reasons when the previous director was um, retiring. But the, but the staff were very united in not wanting it to close. Um, but then we managed to have a meeting between um, the staff representatives here with um, two members of the management board. And, and that was a real turning point because the decision wasn't taken. Um, and from that moment, things went in a better direction. The Virology Christmas party was always very famous. And I guess the one I remember most um, and I guess it must have been nearly 10 years ago now, was my closest colleague at that time, who's no longer with us, sadly, uh, Professor Bartley Clements, he and his lab dressed up um, to be the characters from Chicken Run, and Barclay was the farmer's wife from Chicken Run, and that was highly amusing. Church Street, personally, I think it was a good place to work. Met a lot of people. We were able to interact with everybody, which I enjoyed, and then, um, at the end of the year, we had Christmas parties. Way back in my early days, we had a smoke room, which was good because I was a smoker. And um, we had a tea room. The special memories I have from the CVR are from the, the Christmas party events that we have. And these are fancy dress parties that we have. And the, it's a time that it gives people the opportunity to really show their other side. Um, and I think from that we have some, some really quite outrageous costumes that, that people sometimes, sometimes wear. Um, just to give you an example, there's really quite a lot of cross-dressing that goes on and in particular it's the men who really enjoy putting on a dress and um, putting on some high heels. So it can be really quite odd with it when sometimes you see someone in a white coat in the morning and by the afternoon they're dressed up as a palm tree. We were uh, in Dave Bella's lab, we were going to be Pride and Prejudice. We were going to put suits on and we were going to spray them the, the, the colour of lions because the lions were going to be the pride and we were going to be holding signs that were prejudiced. So that was pride and prejudice. Um, we had to take these suits uh, and, and spray them with gold paint somewhere and we couldn't do it in the lab because they, they <laughs> absolutely stank like you wouldn't believe. It was so smelly. So we decided to take it round the back and do it round the back just next to the air vents into the building. <laughs> so, so the whole building was completely stinking of paint. <laughs> I think we did confess to that, but if not, sorry. <laughs> Probably my favourite one was uh, like Duncan McGeeoch um, when he was in charge here. The theme was something along the lines of uh, what do I want to be when I grow up or where do I see myself in 10 years time or something like that. 
and we got all these, we, we made these big cardboard face masks that were about this Duncan McGee's head and about this sort of size, about eight of us and we all wore identical black suits, white shirts, black ties and had these big Duncan McGee heads on and that was probably my favourite fancy dress of the whole time. I think Duncan quite liked it as well. I feel it's been a privilege uh, working to three directors. I uh, started off, as I mentioned, with uh, Professor John Subak Sharp and then uh, Professor Duncan McGeer, who retired, I think it was about 2009, and then uh, more recently with Massimo Palmarini, who's my favourite, by the way. <laughs> there was also a great deal of other extracurricular activity that was based around the unit. For example, we had a cricket team, we had people play football, there was a squash ladder. So people's lives revolved around Church Street, Byers Road and the institutions and uh, pubs and clubs that are around there. So it um, wasn't um, you know, just a place to work, it was also a place to live. In the old days of the MRT virology unit, Glasgow had a world reputation for its study of, of herpes viruses. Uh, but since then, we've encompassed so many other virus groups that we have a tremendous portfolio of viruses that we, we study. And we truly are now a centre uh, for virus research.